So I wanted to switch gears from doing mouse videos for a little while. So for this video, I'll be doing a setup tour. I'll have pics thrown up on screen here, but I've gone through quite a good number of iterations of my setup before I've arrived at this one. But I think I can confidently say that this is the best my setup can possibly be right now. And I'm not saying this is the best setup ever, but what I am saying is that uh, I am quite happy with how my setup has progressed over the past eight years. And I figured I'd just go ahead and show it to you guys in a neat little setup tour video. Okay, so most of my stuff is actually in this cabinet thing here. Um, this is literally just a storage cabinet where I keep all my tech garbage. But this is literally just a cabinet full of tech stuff. I really need to clean this out. This is god awful. Honestly, I do have quite a bit of clutter here. I think 2025 is going to be my great cleansing where I get rid of a ton of tech garbage. 2022, 2023, and even 2024 a little bit has been a massive upgrade years, a group of upgrade years for me. I've done pretty much nothing but buy stuff to upgrade my setup. So I think now is a good time to uh, stop saving and spending so much money and get rid of some stuff. I do want to briefly mention my Sennheiser HD 800S says these are not garbage. I just can't really use them because I don't want them to break or anything. This is definitely the kind of headphone that you baby, you do not use these daily. This is something that you open the thing, you look at and go, oh yeah, I have these. And you close it so you can do that for your whole life. In here, I have some personal stuff, but I also have all the vinyl sheets that I use to get those colored background shots in some of my videos. So this is what my setup looks like most of the time. So first of all, the chair. It is a steel case gesture. Only thing I'm gonna say about it is, do not spend more than a thousand dollars on a chair. Once you go past that, you're not buying a chair. You're buying a brand, you're buying a gimmick. This thing is cool and all, but it was not worth what I paid for it. Second of all, the desk. Now, this is actually a completely custom desk. I bought the wood, I bought the legs, and I built it myself. So, let's talk about my audio setup. And first of all, let's talk about the microphone and how the mic stand is totally empty. <laughs> That's because I don't really have a main microphone at my desk setup anymore. I'll talk about the microphone I use for videos later, but um, that microphone was pretty much my favorite mic for at my desk. So I'm currently looking at getting a new microphone. I'm looking at something like an SE Electronics 2300, maybe even something as high up as a Neumann TLM 103. I haven't really decided yet. However, I will be using the Rode Procaster, um, what is this, Rodecaster Duo, Rode Procaster Duo. But what's cool about this is that I can actually go into it and I have all these settings so I could go in here and change uh, an equalizer band or a compressor or whatever it may be. And I can do that for inputs as well as outputs. Um, so this is my DAW, my computer. Um, as well as you have a voice effects stuff. So you can set these pads to be voice effects or sound effects. So yeah, that is just a super versatile little audio interface. Moving on to the headphones themselves. The headphones of choice for me these days, the headphones of choice for me these days are going to be Sennheiser HD 660S's with Deconi fenestrated uh, elite sheepskin ear pads. I do want to get something a little bit more reference for headphones because I mainly wear IEMs when I'm trying to listen to music, but I use these when I'm having to track or I need to uh, edit a video or something, I wear headphones. However, my IEMs of choice are the Sony IERM9s. Moving on, I will, okay, I'll go ahead and address the elephant in the room, yes. The keyboard is weird. I am using a ZSA Voyager, and I wanna do a whole video on Ergo split keyboard, so I won't talk about it too much here. I have a ton of keyboards, I'll be honest. I have a lot of different keyboards, but this one easily takes the cake. It's better than all of them. It's the only one I'll ever use, even though it's, it still has a cable. I wanted something wireless. 
this is the keyboard for me personally. Moving on, I do want to talk about my lighting setup very briefly. So this is um, my main key light if I'm at the desk, and then I'll use this sort of as like a backup light. Um, but if I'm filming, then this is set up to be my main light, and this is my backup light, sort of like a hair light. So, but it's worth mentioning, I don't particularly enjoy Elgato, uh, particularly for their stream deck. I know I have the stream deck and the key light and the low profile boom arm, but I do not enjoy Elgato as a company, I'll be honest. Main reason being, this is the only stream deck that has ever actually worked as advertised, and it's the 32 key most expensive model. But I mainly just have this set up for Spotify on the main page, then OBS on this page, and then I have some NVIDIA controls here, and that's pretty much it. The webcam here is a Instalink 360. It's not particularly great. I initially got it for the gimbal controls, and it is kind of cool, don't get me wrong, but honestly, it, it just doesn't work all the time. But moving on to the monitor setup, uh, this is actually a very new portion of the setup. The secondary monitor is just some 1440p monitor that I've had forever. Uh, I've had it for probably like three years now. It's nothing too crazy, whatever. Um, the main monitor is actually the new LG 32 GS 95 UE. I know, great name LG, we love it. So this thing is 42 inches, it's 4K, 240 hertz, it's OLED, 1080p, 480 hertz mode. You press a little button that's at the bottom there and it switches to that mode and that's been awesome as well. For me though, I think I will be doing a video on this because I have seen a lot of people talk about how, I've seen mixed feelings on this monitor. I guess I'll just put it to you that way. So other than that, um, but I, I have had a purely positive experience with it. Moving on to the mouse setup here, uh, we have a bit of variety going on as you can see. So in this shot, we have the Pulsar X2 V2. We have the Logitech G303. We have the Fantastic Beasts Beast X. We have the Final Mouse ULX, and then we have the original Beast X Medium. The only two mice that I really care about at this setup though are the Final Mouse ULX and the G303. The other three mice are just here because I'm doing videos on them. And so that pretty much means that I need to use them as much as possible to see if they suck or not. The mouse pad is a Wallhack SP004. Um, this is the best glass mouse pad. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It is basically the SkyPad 4.0 and yeah, it, it's um, the best mouse, glass mouse pad on the market. Last over here with the mouse setup, we have, uh, you know, dongle land. We also have a 16 port USB hub over here, which if you are someone who has a lot of USB devices, how do you not have something like that? That is a literal game changer over there. And then the PC, and I'm not gonna go through and take apart the side panel and everything, but firstly, this is an overpowered computer. It has a Ryzen 9 7900X. It uses an RTX 4090. It has 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM at 6400 mega, uh, 6, megahertz. CL32, I think. Then it has six terabytes of storage, uh, one four terabyte Gen 5 NVMe drive, and then another Gen 4 two terabyte NVMe drive. Then it has a 1000 watt power supply in it. And I'm pretty sure that's everything of substance. It's all in an H7 flow case. And the only reason I chose this case was because it is big as shit and um, it has good airflow. So it can fit a 4090 and it's not gonna fucking suffocate it. So I do just wanna talk about some EDC stuff really quickly. First of all, uh, the most important thing. So I'm from the South, I've always carried a knife and I'm usually carrying one of these two setups. So let's talk about the one that everyone's eyes immediately gravitated towards. This is my fixed blade, it's a Lion Steel, I think M5, I, I forget what this thing's called. But this is a fixed blade that I usually carry. Um, if I'm not carrying a fixed blade, 
then I'm carrying two pocket knives. This one is a Microtech Ultratech, and this is an automatic out the front knife. Yes, this is legal to carry in the state that I live in. Obviously, I'm not stupid. I know my knife laws. But this is just kind of like a wow factor piece. Like if I have a box to open or something, I'll use this. But I don't really do anything too crazy with it. Um, what I do do crazy stuff with is my Spyderco Paramilitary 2. If the automatic ever fails, if the action breaks, uh, well then I always have a backup. If I have something heavier to do, like shaving some wood or something, then I have this knife and this is the most durable pocket knife on the market, hands down. So continuing with the theme of being off topic, this is my Ridge Wallet. And it's not that I particularly enjoy Ridge wallets. Honestly, I feel like they're really overpriced. It's just that this is the smallest, most durable package you could possibly buy for the money. But things that I do actually stand by, these are my AirPods. I'm not gonna open them because uh, I have really waxy ears and these are disgusting on the inside. I use them at my desk. I use them pretty much all the time. I use them with my phone. I use them with my laptop. I use them all the time. And then this is my phone. This is an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Um, I tried to go Android because I honestly don't like Apple that much. Uh, I love their products, don't get me wrong, they make good ass shit. It's just their business practices that drive me up the fucking wall. But I tried to go Android, I got a Google Pixel 8 Pro, and it just fucking sucks. It's nowhere near how good and high quality and like iPhones are, it's nowhere near. And the last thing is my MacBook M3 Pro Max. Honestly, I've never used Mac OS before, but getting a MacBook and using it on my laptop literally makes me wanna to switch to Mac. Like if I could use this everything with Mac, or if I could play video games on Mac, I wouldn't have this computer. I'm sorry, I love it, I built it, it's my baby. But fucking Christ, Mac is just so much better than Windows. But this isn't everything, honestly. And the reason this video is so long is because I'm about to talk about my camera gear and the stuff I use to make videos. So it's important to understand that there's two sides of this setup. There's the number one side for uh, daily use, gaming, programming, editing these videos. But there's also the other side, the video production side. So. The next bit of this video is just going to be me talking about what I use to make these videos. Okay, firstly, I want to talk about this tripod because I want to set the camera up on a tripod for this because holy shit, my arms are getting tired. Uh, this is a newer tripod. I honestly have no idea about it. It's just, it had enough weight capacity for my camera rig and so that's why I got it and it's Arca Swiss. That's it. Also, so this is a camera slider. Uh, this is actually what I use to do the steady pans to get good shots. Uh, this is another thing that delayed this video to two weeks. Um, I just got this. I just got this and learned how to use it. In my last video, I was using a gimbal. Okay, so the way I was doing videos before was actually very, very jank. For those panning b-roll shots in my last video, it was done on a DJI Ronin RS4 gimbal, which is a great product, but it's totally useless for me as like a product videographer slash wannabe YouTuber. I got it initially because I had no idea how much sliders cost. Back in the day, the best beginner slider was like $800. Now they're like a third of the price of the gimbal, so yeah, definitely a big blunder on my part. And I think b-roll looks so much better and I think it's probably worth saying that this is a good idiot mistake to make now so that I can make better content in the future. And I think it's safe to say that we have fixed the problem. It's almost like we're using the proper equipment for the job. But yes, there is actually a lot more to do with my videos than just the shit you see on my setup. So let's talk about all my lenses because I have far too many. First of all, this is the most important lens I own. This is a Sony FE 1.8 35mm. Uh, this is what most of the, well, actually all the videos uh, prior to the Lamzu video were shot on. With that being said, um, we have another prime lens. So this is a uh, full frame f2.5 uh, 50 millimeter g lens from sony and this is part of their ultra compact line of lenses so as you can see this is a very very small lens 
You can get a lens hood for it that makes it look like a Leica lens. Don't really use this lens that much unless I'm doing photos and stuff, and I'm rarely doing those, unless I'm doing like a thumbnail these days. But uh, yeah, I still like this lens a lot. This is a 24 mil f2.8 uh, 24G um, from Sony as well. Uh, I use this one for the exact same reasons as the 50 mil, except this is 24. So that's the end of my useful lenses, okay? We're gonna get into some wacky shit now. This is the only Cine lens that I own. Cine lenses are basically just lenses specifically designed for video. Uh, they have these like ribbed focus rings here so that you can run focus motors on them. They don't have autofocus built in. Um, and I fucking hate this lens. And I specifically bought it because it was 35 millimeter f1.2. So this is the lowest light lens that I own, but with f1.2, the focus depth of field is so shallow and the like minimum focus distance on this lens is so far out in front that I really don't have a use for it. And the next lens I'm about to show you is the cheapest lens that I own and it is one of my favorite. This is my 7.5 millimeter f2.8 fisheye lens. This is the lens that I used to take my profile picture uh, and I fucking love it. It's a fantastic meme lens. And the best part is I spent 75 fucking dollars on this lens. For example, if I were to use it for video, this is what it would look like. So, you know, not really usable. Then I have these, these are macro tube extensions. Basically you put these on any lens, it becomes a macro lens. I actually use these when taking the thumbnail for my last video. So. Super useful um, for getting fine details and stuff like that. This is the microphone that I use at the setup. This is a Lewitt LCT 440 Pure. And I have this on a desk stand here. And um, yeah, I I'd say this microphone is better than what most people use these days. Uh, it's just a little condenser microphone, nothing too crazy about it. And uh, it was 200 and I think $50 when I bought it. So super good value. And the reason I use this one in particular is because it is one of the smoothest sounding condenser microphones I've ever used. And it is also really good with EQ. So it takes an EQ really well. And that means that I can go in post and EQ some of the high frequencies this thing tend to has and some of the annoying frequencies in my voice, for instance. And uh, yeah, this one is just a really good microphone to use if you're going to do any post-processing. Last but not least, this is the B cam that I use and it was the A cam before I got my current A cam, but this is an A7CR. But the problem with this camera is that it has a high megapixel sensor, which means it's better for photography, not so great for videography. I actually just use this mostly as a photography cam. Every thumbnail I've taken on the channel has been taken with this camera right here. I can actually use this camera as a webcam and that's what I do with my streams. But when I'm doing videos, this is pretty much my B cam. So this is actually the main camera that I shoot with. Uh, this is not what it looks like all the time. Most of the time I don't have the monitor on here. I have it on a stand like somewhere off in the corner here. Um, however, this is what it looks like all to put together. So let me explain what some of these parts are. First of all, the camera body is a Sony FX3. And then the lens I'm using, uh, this is actually the only lens I use with this camera now. This is the Sony uh, FE F2.8 24 to 70 GM2. And then I have a variable ND filter on here. For those that don't know, this basically just darkens your uh, the front of your lens so that you can uh, shoot it brighter settings without actually having to change your shutter speed or your ISO or anything to change exposure. This lets you change exposure just by twisting this little thing here. And then we have uh, two actually different microphone solutions uh, here on the camera. So we have the main one that I use, the XLR module that comes with the FX3. So then for my second microphone solution, I actually have a DJI uh, microphone set up here with the um, wireless uh, lavalier mics that they have. Uh, I'm currently wearing one. I've been using one for this whole video. I really don't like how these sound in comparison to like real microphones. So those are kind of like a last resort, uh, you know, too many variables to be able to properly mic up something. This is what you use. And then lastly, we have the monitor. Now, 
This is the um, most contentious part of this setup. So most of the time I'm not using my DJI mics and most of the time I'm not using my monitor in this way. Uh, I most of the time have it on a stand, but my camera is rarely assembled fully like that. Most of the time it looks like this. This is what it looks like most of the time. I have most of the stuff taken off. Just the little XLR handle. And I believe that is finally everything. And yeah, that's pretty much it. As I said earlier, this isn't like the best setup, but I want these videos, these setup tour videos to serve two purposes. One, I want people who want to take inspiration from my setup, who see something cool and then want to go do that. I want them to be able to do that as easily as possible. I don't want this to be tucked away on some sort of weird Reddit thread. Uh, and two, I want this to be an archive of my past setups because I don't want to be at home forever. And when I move out, I want to look back on what I've done with this space and still be able to take inspiration on how I can refine the more space I'll have in the future uh, to better make content or better do whatever it is I'm trying to do. And this isn't perfect. Obviously, there is some things that I don't like, and there are some things that other people will hate and maybe not make any sense, but for me, this is the best setup I could possibly have right now. I think I've peaked in making use of this space, and most importantly, I'm really happy with this setup and how it's turned out over eight years of upgrading. And I hope you guys think it is a pretty dope setup as well.